My name is Mas Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics, and today I would like to do a teardown of another Nokia Siemens Networks uh, piece of equipment. This is um, a part of the Nokia Siemens Networks BTS Flexi system. Uh, this particular unit consists of a um, dual diplexer with dual antenna outputs, and it also has a dual uh, low noise amplifier sitting here at the bottom. So let's take a look at this um, system that consists of two transmit channels and four receive channels. The base station that this unit com comes from, uh, this is only one third of um, a whole antenna array. As we can see, this is configured up for we have a uh, transmit A connection here and a receive A. There's a re transmission B and a receive B. And then there's antenna B and A. Then there's the uh, connection down to the um, to the power, the control connection down here, as the only bus connection sits here at the amplifier module. Same goes with the power input. So I assume either that uh, there is uh, some connector between the two modules in between for the uh, power, or maybe this uh, the diplexer only has a few um, a duplexer only has a few uh, measurement capabilities that goes through this signal cable. So I will get this out of the cabinet and uh, let's see how many screws the lids have. While this was a lot of screws, it's certainly uh, way too few for uh, something like um, RF power electronics and uh, duplexes. So get rid of all these screws and we can see what is underneath these uh, thin shields. I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, exactly as expected. Uh, this is... Ah, wonderful! One million screws. Well, I guess uh, I'm getting on it once again with the battery machine. And the time has finally come to lift off the lids of these units. Oh, I really like to start with the low noise amplifier. So. See what hides in here. Ah, what a beauty! Gold everywhere. Let's see if we can actually see that we have two symmetrical. Ah, they're, they're actually not mirrored. These. I had expected that that uh, at least this unit seems to be mirrored. Um, if we look at how the all the, the adjustment screws are sitting. That looks quite mirrored, but um, over here, there certainly seems to be a power uh, supply part uh, and some uh, system control for the uh, where the bus input is, and then there is the uh, the two amplifiers here. But we will get further down into this later. Let's see the first shield here. Now this is on the um, on the duplexer. So this is uh, what connects down to the um, to the main board and the um, and the bus connection, and this uh, clearly seems to be um, yeah measurement signal conditioning um, and just the all the output input here to the uh, amplifier itself. So all this will go up through here and then through the duplexes and out to the antenna outputs and inputs. So let's see the duplexes itself. Ah, nice. Going for the uh, couple look here, um, I can see. It's not uh, as uh, nicely machined as uh, some other cavities that I've seen. This uh, actually has some uh, rough uh, edges down here. That uh, it's just a part of the cast. 
I can see. Um, but other than that, um, see we have the uh, antenna connectors going up here. And then uh, from here it splits out into a uh, receive and a transmit um, line of cavities. We can see we have a path going this way around, connects down to here. And we have another path going around here, which connects to here. And this is actually the uh, transmit part, and this is the receive part. And it is completely identical on the other side. I will, of course, uh, as always, uh, get some high-res uh, pictures of this, and uh, we'll take a closer look at the component level. See the lids for the duplexes here. Um, that's usually just um, aluminium. But one thing they do have on this that I have not uh, seen on other units is they have actually marked up the different adjustment screws for which uh, TX1, TX2, ATX1, ATX2, RRX1, RRX2. So that's usually not marked up on the uh, plates. So um, I will get further down, get the rest of the screws out, see what we can find underneath uh, these boards. Okay, so this will most likely damage a few of the SMA connectors. Um, let's see, get this the antenna connections off here. Let's see that maybe I can gently pry this board outwards like this, which should prevent that I break off all the small connectors uh, down here. Yeah. Maybe it's too uh, too tight a fit to actually get the board out like this. Or maybe I forgot to screw somewhere. Yeah, of course. That usually helps. Get it up over this rod over here, like that. And then if I just gently, ah, like that. Ah, yeah, disconnected all the SMA connectors just from prying off the PCB tracks. That's nice. Now they're actually reusable. Ah, so nice. We can actually see here the. Um, to transmit A and B lines um, also go directly into the duplexer. So they did in fact not go through the board here. Um, so I'll get some pictures of this and uh, we can uh, see, talk about that. See 1800 megahertz, which uh, we already knew that this was a GSM 1800 uh, unit. And there's also some components and markings uh, on the back side. We'll take a look at it all. But other than that, uh, nothing special uh, underneath here. Just uh, some uh, RF cavities for shielding. Uh, now the um, Main uh, power amplifier board here. Um, that's a little uh, different. It's made different than I, than I have seen before, because here it is actually um, split up into a few modules. That the power amplifier, the uh, the output transistor, is this little board sitting here right next to the um, output circulator. That's uh, quite unusual. That uh, they are made in separate boards. That's the first time I see this. Um, in a uh, Nokia Siemens network unit. So it's not even sure that we can get it all out at once, since the circulator here is also soldered to the uh, the output SMA connector. But we can give it a try. Just finding a place where I can lift it. 
something do feel stuck somewhere. And it's not over here. Oh, it's connected for the fans at the back. So like that. I'll just have to um, sort off the um, the circulators before I can uh, take out the board. The circulators have been uh, desoldered. The uh, two small power amplifier boards just sits in these uh, eight uh, eight legs here. So hopefully uh, we can get it out very carefully now. Probably way too heavy to hold their own weight. And again, here we have the connection to the front SMA connectors. Just gently try that off. Yeah, went better than expected. And the back side here. Yeah, here we have all the magic. All the big power supply components, all the DSP chips, the uh, the ceramic filters, saw filters, etc. Analog to digital conversion, digital to analog conversion. This is absolutely a beautiful board. Uh, I really love it. This it's really nice to see that they have the central processing unit here, it's split up into two lines, and actually. Despite over here they mirrored everything, but here we actually have a copy-paste uh, version of everything. So that's quite interesting design, cho design choices. But I guess it's easier to mirror a, uh, a cavity than a, a whole uh, RF design here. At least here you have some routing that is not that easy to just mirror and uh, get the same result. As you probably would change the facing between... Uh, signals and units and such but once again high-res pictures of all this and uh, we will take a closer look at the uh, components used for for this unit thank you very much for viewing this part one video uh, of the teardown of the amplifier itself in part two i will do the circuit analysis so if you want to make sure that you don't miss part two video Subscribe to my channel and hit the bell and you are sure to get a notice when the part 2 video is online. So, until next time, see ya.